Welcome to SeaWorld and welcome to How O Scream, our second horror event out here in the States and the first time we've ever done a How O Scream. It's only the second year they've done it here at SeaWorld. It's going to be loud and I think it's going to be really full on. Five mazes, five scare zones, lots of entertainment. I tell you, I can't wait for this, really can't wait for this. Right, here we go, scare zones and haunted houses. So the whole end of this park is blocked off quite early from the rest of it. Whilst they prepare for this, I mean, we were only up here eating like a couple of hours ago. It's quite insane, really. And now we're gonna go around the rest of the park and um, yeah, lots to do, lots to do. Now we're all slowly heading into the main part of the event, which includes going through the dead end. I have to say the amount of characters so far, it's been epic at the front. I've still people, there are people coming out of bushes. I read the thing what's in here. But everyone has to walk through here. Transported into the main event. Right. So we're going to see which way people go because it's numbered one to five. One starts on the right and then basically goes around number order, or you start on the left and go five down to one. And it seems to be half and half. I'm going to go left. You reckon right? I'll tell you the problem with right is the fact that, now it's all right, but one of the maze exits, which is maze number one, actually comes back out the other side of that bridge where everyone's gonna be coming back in. So that's the reason why I'm turning left. Now we did wonder why there were no shows on at the fountain. This is probably why, because you can't access this side of the park. Right, I think the first maze is Blood Reckoning down here by the pipeline coaster. Let's go see what we can find down here. Now, of course, if we just follow the path, we will naturally go through some of the scare zones as well. Um, there is always a lot of signs saying you can't film. We know we can't film in mazes and things. We're not really sure about the scare zones, so until we get told off, to be quite honest. I mean, it looks creepy, doesn't it? It looks creepy. Is that open? Well, I didn't think there were any rides open tonight, but actually, pipeline. Pipeline's open. Well, the new coaster for 2023. Ooh, we'll get a night ride on that later. Right, we'll come back to that. <laughs> Love it, they're proper in your face here, coming from all angles. That is one. <laughs> Evil fucking <laughs> guy, Jesus Christ. That was, I don't know, he's got like a little siren in his hand. That was brilliant. You gotta remember, this is a normal night as well. Uh -oh. <laughs> what is it? We're gonna skip them terrifying the small children. Now we will be back for the pipeline coaster, so we're gonna meet these characters again later. Precious dogs in the business. 
There's a lot of characters in here. A lot of characters. Uh -oh. <laughs> right, that's the Carnival Walk, bro, down by the pipeline coaster. As I said, if you want to get to the mazes, you've got to walk through these scare zones. There's no, you know, you can go the other way, but you're gonna hit another scare zone. And I'll tell you, the amount of people in there, but it, you know, it's not a press night or anything like that, but my God, how good does that look? It's actually darker than what the, um, what the action cam kind of lets you believe, but I cannot wait to get a night ride in on Pipeline. Where did he come from? Oh my God. I don't even think this is a scare zone either. It's not even a scare zone, this. They're just out with chainsaws. We might even get to our first maze soon. Maybe, if we make it. Right, it's a scare zone, Love Light District. Oh, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. Oh my. Well, that is something completely different. I've never seen anything like this before. I'll come back and get my picture taken later, I think. That's really cool. I've never seen anything like that before. Right, first maze. Obviously we can't film inside the mazes, but we will give you our review when we get out. But this is blood reckoning. We've been looking at the sign all day, wondering what it's like. There's a lot of people who are ready. I believe this is one of the most popular ones. But either way, we need to go through it. Right, it's been about 20 minutes now. and We're gonna enter the Bleeding Rabbit Books condemned store, but there's quite a few actors around as well. So a drunken pirate, I'm not sure how he fits into this yet. Maybe we'll find out. But it's not like Universal this one, it's very sort of um, British style, if you will, where you're going in in groups of sort of 10? So I can't wait for this, this one's gonna be about scares. And the queue for it now is massive. It is the first maze you come to when you walk around this way, so I'm kind of not too surprised. Right, so that was the Blood District with Blood Reckoning. It is a very sort of English setup, is what I'd like to call it. Going in in groups of 10, it's all about loud noises and jump scares. Uh, you walked into like a bookshop, which kind of makes sense because it was a bookshop sign on the outside. Uh, you then developed and actually went outside for a bit before coming back in uh, to a train station and in what looked like sort of a, a yard area uh, where they were effectively draining people's blood. The other thing I will say is there's quite a few jump scares in there. We can see the people behind us were um, uh, clearly getting scared with various things and the loud noises did kind of catch you out at points as well. The only thing I will say is it did lack a finale. I think the finale was the blood being sucked, but there was a little room afterwards where not a lot happened before you exited. So yeah, it lacked a really good finale, but actually looked quite good in there. Looked really good in there. Right, it is the dead end down there. I don't think Manta is due to open, but it's not open yet. It's due to open at eight when the park shuts. They've got to empty the park. Yeah, it's a long story. So we're heading this way now. Um, we've realized that the rides are open. We can see uh, Mako going around. So a night ride on Mako is probably gonna be our next stop because a lot of the mazes are over the other side of the park. Kind of allow about an hour for every maze, given the queue. I mean, that Blood Reckoning queue looks insane when we get off it. So I guess we'll have to see as we go round. Right, as we come into the shark area, 
see Mako in the background. This is a scare Where's zone. Where's the key? Where is it? Which is a uh, pirate themed. In fact, this area of the park does look incredible to be fair. Some of the statues over here which are out normally. And it is very dark. And I mean very dark. It's probably a good job too. But this is really eerie, isn't it, walking through here? This is like really eerie. And it's not that busy this end of the park as well. So you're seeing a few people around, but you can't see a lot with the smoke. It does smell like a maze, yeah. Yeah, it sounds stupid, but those that go in mazes know that it smells like a maze. Right, so Monster Stomp is one of the shows. That's up here. I have to say, the shows were going to leave till last. Um, for the simple reason that we want to make sure we've got the mazes done. Right, this is the Witchcraft Bayou Scare Zone. Now we looked at this during the day actually and it does look like, uh, again, it was going to be quite so dark. It's unbelievable how dark it is. I don't know what you can make out but there is a witch standing there. We've got some candles lit. I'll try and brighten it up best I can, but I literally cannot see where I'm going. I can hear things. There's a lot of smoke. There's people. I kick something. Okay, I'm not sure I want to pet crow to be honest with you. And then it gets a bit brighter as you come out. Alright, here's your welcome in from this side. That's the Witchcraft Bayou. That was dark and scary. Right, the next maze, Dead Vines, Norlin's Nightmare. We can't film in here, but we'll let you know what it's like when we get out. Right, it is creepy, creepy Sesame Street. Right, that was Dead Vines, that was really, really cool. Now, I'm not gonna read any descriptions as to what it's actually about. I'm just gonna tell you afterwards how I interpreted it. So for me, that was Vines taken over, Dead Vines taken over. I actually got a jump scare before I got in there as someone came out of this can, out of nowhere, absolute nowhere. Uh, I didn't find it very funny at all, to be honest with you, but uh, they found it quite funny. There's a couple of really nice moments in there, sort of themed, garden themed, I, I guess, with the Vines. Um, there's someone on a bungee which pops out, which is really cool. And there was a, uh, a more of a witch sort of style character, completely in black. I looked right at her, still didn't spot her because it was so dark in there. And she got me as well. But yeah, I really, really enjoyed that. Bit more of a finale, there was someone coming around the corner, um, banging and sort of giving it, uh, giving it large, if you will. So uh, yeah, that was, quite, um, that was quite something. Right, uh, it's Captain's Revenge. I'm not sure what Captain's Revenge is. Let's find out. Right, maze number three, not a very long queue either. It does seem like Blood Reckoning is the first one that everyone's gone to. I mean, we haven't gone back to the beginning of the park yet with two and one, but Blood Reckoning seems to be popular. Captain's Revenge here. We don't know anything about this. I said we've read nothing about the mazes whatsoever. Taking them as they come, but I'm gonna guess this is pirate themed. Going out on a whim here. 
Right, uh, that's Captain something. I've already forgotten the name. Captain's Revenge. Captain's Revenge, yeah. So that is a ghost ship, effectively. You're walking through a ghost ship. I'll tell you what, that's the best looking maze we've seen here tonight. That was really, really well put together. Like, really well put together. Looked really stunning inside. Um, as we turn around as well, look at the uh, look at the skull there. That looks really cool. Yeah, really well put together, and uh, it is full of jump scares. Um, I had one moment in there where I was looking, a bit of misdirection, honestly. You hear a sound from one side, turn around, she was in my face, and it was a bit like, whoa, where did you come from? But there's a lot of loud noises, there's bells in the ears, uh, there's sirens, there's all sorts. But yeah, I really enjoyed that. The look of it was really good, really, really good. Captain's Revenge tucked down the bottom there. Right, now we're heading back to the entrance area where the other two mazes are. Made really good time on these two. I have a feeling that people are coming up here last because as you can see, it's starting to get busy coming in this direction. So hopefully as we're going in that direction, it's getting a bit quieter. <laughs> the next scare zone, a lot of this was on view during the day. To be interested to see what live actors are here and that's toxic turmoil. Weapons, any actors. Nicely lit up, look. It's a Ghostbuster. Is it? That's oh, praying. It is always the old songs that sound creepy, and this is one of them. I don't even think this is the... Is this the original? No, oh, I don't know. I don't know either. I could quite easily trip over that pallet there. I need to be a little bit careful. So we have a few random people walking through. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. They weren't expecting that. <laughs> oh dear. I have a feeling that's the end of the zone. I could be wrong. It is quite it's quite smoky down here. That is a really tall person. I don't necessarily think they're anything to do with the toxic area. It's good to see some of the staff are dressed up as well in fairness. But uh uh, I think that's the end of the toxic view. Oh, there's a lot of toxic people. Right, it is dark. I appreciate it's dark on camera, you probably can't see me either, but that's toxic turmoil. Definitely highlighted if you give the uh, high four to the person. Oh, love it, love it. Right, we've got to find the next mazes now. Uh, we're nearly back at the front actually. The park isn't that big when you walk around it like this, but it's lovely rooted for Halloween. Rides at night include Icebreaker. Let's see it come back. Oh, look at the blue lit. That is well cool. It's going this time though. We're not going to see it again now. It's a bit busy around here for Beneath the Ice, the meltdown. Probably goes with the slogan, I guess, fire or freeze. Let's see what it's all about. Seemed to be all about fire, to be honest with you. It was quite, um, it's really well put together in there, but I can't, I couldn't de definitively tell you a story without reading the description. I have to say, I do like it when you go into a maze and you know exactly what it's about and you can define the story afterwards. Apparently it's about a fire and ice sister uh, battle as you go through. It feels very sort of like fiery, there's heat effects in there. It's a lot of loud noises, a lot of loud noises, a lot of strobe lighting and a, um, and uh, yeah, a lot of banging and, and jump scares. It's very jump scary. It's funny, because when you do Universal, um, it's quite the opposite. It's all about, you know, the theme and how it looks and everything. And then when you come here, it's all about jump scares, which is very much what it's like in the UK. I really enjoyed that. It was a really well put together maze. It looked fantastic in there and uh, flowed really, really nicely. There's one part actually a long corridor. I thought it was over. And then you go back in uh, for the finale where they're all sort of on the stage. You've got your eyes distracted to the stage whilst to the right of you someone comes out and jumps at you. I had no jump scares in there but plenty of people around us did. Uh, including the girl in front who's screamed all the way through. And that's what you like to see. That's when you know it's working. Right, house number one. We work backwards. 
is the laboratories. Delirium 666. Delirium 666 laboratories at that. I expect this to have quite a long queue when we get around the corner, being house one. Um, although I kind of get the impression that the one we've just done and the Blood Reckoning are probably the two more popular mazes. But we'll see. This one looks like... Oh, no, no. I'd say this one's got quite a long queue. Okay, well this is the last maze anyway, so uh, let's go see what this one is all about. A look out over to SeaWorld How O Scream. So that was Laboratory 666 uh, Delirium, something like that. Um, it's a very slightly different maze because actually it was actor led to go into a, a lift. Uh, the lift then went down to level 666 where it got stuck. You then get out um, to some weird experiments basically on uh, sea creatures. There's a lot of mermaids in there, a lot of... Uh, mermaids in there. Yeah, it was a sort of a sea creature uh, experiment gone wrong. Um, it was a really cool looking maze to be fair. Some of the sets were brilliant as in you being in a lapse. Um, and it, uh, the finale is probably best finale of the night. It had a spinning tunnel which was spinning, was proper, proper spinning. Now, I think because you had the setup first in the lift which actually was about half the maze, the rest of it was really short. And I mean really short once you were walking through. Which was a real shame because it was probably the best looking maze of the night with a lot of jump scares along the way, uh, along the way as well. But yeah, sadly, finished quite quickly. But um, yeah, Spinning Tunnel was superb. Right, that's all the mazes done. That's all the scare zones done. So what we're going to do now is try and get on some rides and then we'll sum up at the end and let you know what our favourite one was. darker down in Khan Evil. Lots of people around though. Right, so I went on Pipeline earlier on the day and I thought it was a good ride. Genuinely thought it was a good ride. Anyone saw our SeaWorld vlog uh, or sees that actually coming up, this will probably be up beforehand, we'll agree with that. But oh my god, riding it after it's warmed up at night, that ride was incredible. The airtime the feet off the ground, off the board, was incredible. I absolutely love that. There's a five minute queue for the Hyper Coaster Mako at night. Let's see what this one looks like. I don't think there's gonna be much light on this, but we'll soon find out.
it runs incredibly quick at night once it's warmed up mako much better than this morning much much better than this morning cracking ride on there it's the final ride of the night and that is icebreaker probably the lightest part of this park as well at night this station area it is walk on therefore i shall be walking on it icebreaker that is again a very very different experience to when i rode it earlier front row that was it had the whip on that and the ejector time is insane absolutely insane right that pretty much wraps our day up at how o scream it's been a great time but we'll get to the front and then we'll sum up our favorite from the evening Now, because we did the maze earlier, we didn't actually walk through Frozen Terror. Whoa. Whoa. I can't see anything. get quite close to you with the shovels and the sparks they managed to get out of it but that's frozen terror that was the last scare zone we missed it earlier because the maze the um uh, laboratory's maze starts over there and actually ends down by the entrance so we completely missed this area glad we come back through all right we're at the park exit but they are getting in the final frights on your way you know we got we gotta get fixed it's fine <laughs> Thanks for your money, have a good time. <laughs> That's brilliant. How I'll scream, freeze or burn. That's the Orlando version. Obviously there is a how I'll scream at Tampa Bay as well for Bush Gardens, but this is the SeaWorld version. What do we think? That was a great evening. That was genuinely a great evening. Five scare mazes, I think it was seven um, scare zones in the end, and the scare zones were brilliant. They were dark full of actors you know not just one or two we're talking seven or eight actors in each one maze wise well i think the captain's revenge the pirate one was my favorite i think it would have been laboratories a uh, 666 had it been that little bit longer it just needed a little bit more to it um i'll give a special shout out to the vine maze because it actually made me jump twice a, a proper proper jump before i even got into the damn maze on the first one as well which is really really rare and um, the rest of them you you know they're out there for jump scares but they're not saying it's going to make me jump too much uh, the blood reckoning which we'd heard so many good things about i didn't like at all didn't think it was a very good maze didn't think there was a lot of scares in it didn't think it looked particularly great so one we started with it probably didn't set the evening up very well but it did get better and better and better Really nice surprise to get on some night rides as well because we weren't expecting any of the coasters to be open. Pipeline, you'll watch the SeaWorld vlog and you'll see me going, yeah, it's all right. It's incredible, absolutely incredible. Not only at night, but as it's warmed up during the day, in 
incredible ride. Really, really like that. The air time, the ejector time, um, the fact that the seats are moving and your, your feet are coming off the ground when it's running that quick, something else. And a night ride on the other coasters, except Manto. It's not been running particularly great today. It was closed when we went over to it, but uh, we got some more night rides in. So yeah, how a scream, see well. Big thumbs up from us, great value. Um, yeah, really, really pleased we did it while we're out here. If you've liked the video, please drop it a like. We are on tour at the moment, so we're not in the UK, but thank you for joining us here on UK Theme Parks, and we'll see you next time.